Hello, thank you for joining us today. I'm going to be walking you through an introduction to Qualtrics. We will be covering some basic aspects of Qualtrics, including setting up and organizing the survey, creating questions, various question types, labeling questions and responses, and simple survey distribution. We are going to start by creating a new project. We are going to create a new blank project, which is the first option. You can also create from a library or a copy. This is where you can create a new survey based on a pre-existing survey already in your account. You can also create from a file. The file has to be in Qualtrics survey format. Qualtrics will aid you further if you choose this option. For this demonstration, we are going to be creating a new blank project. We will be naming the new blank project Qualtrics Beginner Demo. You can place your new project in a folder you've already created based on the categories you create. We are going to discuss how to organize your survey. The goal is to keep it simple and easily readable when you export your data and prepare it for analysis. Qualtrics allows you to add blocks to easily organize and edit your survey. The purpose of blocks is to chunk your content into categories. The first block you might create is for the consent form. To do this, change the question type to multiple choice question. In the question text box, you have the option to write paragraphs, or you can copy and paste a pre-made consent form from a Word document, PDF, or other similar file into the text box. For brevity purposes, we are going to copy and paste a pre-made consent form. You might receive a warning from Qualtrics telling you that the amount you're trying to paste exceeds the word limit, but that's okay. It's just a glitch. Click outside the text box and your information should appear. Per MGSU IRB regulations, the participant must actively press yes or no to continue on in the survey. So we only need two options, yes I consent and no I do not consent. As you can see, the default is three choices. To change this, use the toolbar on the right hand side of the screen. It will allow you to add or subtract a choice. For our demonstration, we are going to subtract a choice. To label the choices, you can click on the text and edit it directly. Turning back to the right side of the screen, you can see there are other question options. The one we are going to focus on is the forced response. This is important when you need the participant to answer the question. For example, on the consent form, we need to know if the participant consents before allowing them to continue on with the survey. To do this, you can, e you can either click this box or you can use the drop-down menu. There are two options, forced response or request response. The forced response requires a response from the participant before they can complete the survey. For the request response option, if the participant skips the question, Qualtrics will prompt them with the skipped question when the participant attempts to end the survey, but it does not require them to answer the question to finish the survey. And like we said, we will choose force this response. Now that the consent block is done, we will add a new block. For this demonstration, we are going to add a demographics block. To do this, press add block. Press the create new question caret, which will bring you up, which will bring up all the questions types options. For demographic questions, you usually use the multiple choice question type, so we're going to select this option. Like we did before, we would write the question into the text box, and our question is, what is your ethnicity? You have the option to edit multiple choices simultaneously. This might be a good idea if you have a lot of choices, because then you don't have to manually change each choice row by row. To do this, we'll click the Edit Multiple option. If you already have the choices in another document, you can copy and paste them here. Each line represents one choice. And it automatically formats that into your survey. Another demographics question we might add is asking the participant their age. Another way to add a question is to hover over a previous question and select the green plus sign. This is beneficial if you are repeatedly using the same question type. In this case, you can change the question type here to text entry, and our question will be, what is your age?
This will allow the participant to type in an answer instead of selecting a predetermined response. To ensure the participant's responses are consistent, you can control the minimum and maximum allowable characters they can type. To do this, go back to the right column and click Content Validation. As you can see, there are other options like phone number and date, but since we're dealing with age, we're only concerned with number. Because you have to be 18 to participate, the minimum amount of characters you can enter here will be two. The maximum will also be two, and we will not allow decimals. When you finish creating the demographics questions, you will create another block. Press Add Block. The new block will contain our personality measures. Since this is a new block, you'll want to introduce the section to the participant. You might include information such as length of the section, the types of questions you'll, they'll see, and any potential instructions. To do this, you're going to press the Create New Question caret and click Descriptive Text, where you can then enter your introduction. We are going to use the matrix question type to display the personality measures. The question text can include the instructions for the survey. Next, we are going to add the big five questions. And the first one is I see myself who is reserved. The second is generally trusting. And the third is tends to be lazy. And these are just a few examples from the Big Five. In the Big Five personality inventory, there are five scale points, so we will be using the Likert matrix type. The current labels on the scale are not correct. To edit this, there are some pre-made options that Qualtrics gives you. The Big Five uses an agreement scale, which is one of the options that Qualtrics provides. Select this option. Since the Big Five scale is reversed compared to the Qualtrics option, you can press the reverse button to ensure that they're consistent. As you can see, the default scale is a seven point scale, and you can change this on the right hand toolbar. One thing to consider is labeling your blocks and your questions. This makes understanding your exported data much easier. To do this, you hover over your current label and click it. We're going to change the first block to consent, and we're going to rename it consent in the abbreviated form. For the second block, we're going to label it demographics. In each question under that, you can either label them Q1, Q2, Q3, or give a more descriptive label, such as, that, such as ethnicity or age. For the third block, we're going to name it Big Five Inventory and we're going to label the questions BFI, and when you export your data, you will see BFI1, BFI2, BFI3, and so on. Something to consider when you're done creating your survey is changing the recode labels. This will make your data easier to read when you export it. Something Qualtrics likes to default Likert labels is to labels that may not align with what you need. So it's important to double check this when you're done. To do this, click the little settings wheel and press recode values. You can then press the Recode Values checkbox to display the recode values that Qualtrics chose. As you can see, these happen to be in the right order, but definitely check before exporting your survey. Also, wait to do this until the very end of your survey creation, as values can change as you add questions. So hypothetically, let's say this is the end of our survey. Now we want to focus on the distribution of the survey. To do this, you're going to scroll back to the top of your screen and click Distribution. Qualtrics gives you a lot of options to distribute your survey. One of the first options is to compose an email. If you want to distribute the email to multiple people, you can create a contact list. Press New Contact List and enter their information. You'll see that your information will already be in the From address and From name boxes. There's also when to send the email and the body message of the email will be included, but you can change them. You can also create an anonymous link, which generates a link you can paste into emails, Facebook statuses, or MTurk. And so this ends our beginner video. Please watch our advanced video if you want to learn more about survey logic, creating conditions, randomizing questions, or pipe text. Thank you.